So my name is Hrst Uchonov. I'm from Bulgaria, but I've studied in Germany. And um, I'm working with Roco for almost three years now. Um, and for that time, I could say that I've achieved some things. And uh, um, I work uh, for BioLogis, Genetic Information Management, a company based in, in Frankfurt and Main. And uh, what we do is uh, we uh, develop uh, medical applications and for that we use uh, Drupal for some of them. And one of the applications is uh, for um, writing uh, diagnostic reports, clinical reports. And for that use case we need a content management system. And um, certainly we have uh, to provide also uh, auto safety capability. Um, and, um, what is auto safe? Auto safe is uh, uh, intermediately saving the state of a, of a page so that in a case of um, uh, quitting the browser, um, the user can still return to its previous state and uh, uh, start editing from where uh, the browser was terminated. And um, so, but uh, in order to have auto safe, we need uh, to first to ask the question how do we detect changes uh, that uh, have been done on the page? And uh, one of the challenges is uh, on content entity forms in Drupal 8, and it's possible one of the possible ways is that we do an AJAX submission and then we build the entity from the user from, from the current user input and then uh, compare the entity with the original one used to build the form for changes. Um, one of the disadvantages uh, for this use case is that uh, it might happen that uh, the entity is not properly built and uh, the validation fails and um, it is also it's uh, slow as well uh, because uh, building the entity and in case of inline entity forms, nested big, big nested uh, entity structures, it might take sometimes depending on what the form is up to 30 seconds for just building the entity like a normal submission and we, we, we just want to avoid this case. And um, what we've decided is uh, that there is one other way to detect changes, and it's when the user opens the form, then uh, we send immediately uh, a post request, an AJAX submission, and we just um, temporarily store the user input, how the form looks like before the user has changed it. So we just copy over the, uh, uh, the user input and from then on we just compare the user input and if it has changed then we have a change and we start writing auto safe states in a temporary storage. So, but like I said uh, it might be pretty slow for some cases and um, the problem for this is the whole form building and form validation in Drupal. Um, it hasn't changed uh, for a lot of years, it's the same like in, it was in Drupal 7. So what we have done, uh, we, we have Drupal 8 now and it uses services, it's based on the container of Symfony and um, this way we just would um, disable the whole form validation and only use the form building just for the submission so that we have the submission handlers but we don't process the input, we just need the raw input that we save it so that in, we can use it later to rebuild the form. That way it was present on the page. And uh, that what we do is we just turn off a lot of the form building so that an autosave submission even a, in a, on a really, really big form, it takes like 200 milliseconds. Uh, the current state of the autosave uh, form module is uh, that we currently um, support uh, autosave on config form, config entity forms, and on autosave on content entity forms. And uh, we currently don't provide support for regular forms, but uh, if there is a feature request for this, then I'm going to work on that. It's just something that we don't need currently, and that's why we haven't implemented it, but it's not hard. It just, if somebody needs it, then I'll start working on it. So, uh, if you need it, just feel free to open an issue on the, uh, on the module and then I'll do it. Um, there is one more question about autosave and it's about concurrent editing. What happens if you have two users 
working on the same form. And uh, the question is currently in Drupal, it's not possible. It's just like um, you have user A and user B. Uh, the one, the, both of them, they work on the content entity form, the one saves, and then the other tries to save, and then the, uh, he gets the message uh, that uh, it's uh, saving the form, it's not possible because it has been saved meanwhile on another place. And uh, that's why what we do uh, with autosave is that uh, if this case happens, then we just disable the autosave and delete all the autosave states because we, it's just not possible that we merge entities. We don't have this possibility right now in Drupal 8. So it's only possible when there is only one user working with the form and only one user saves it. And that's how it is currently. So, um, also, uh, one of the things about the autosave is how it currently works is that uh, you uh, the, um, the site builder has the possibility to configure the module that it works like uh, autosave submission um, is triggered every 60 seconds or every 30 seconds. That, uh, this is just a configuration. And currently, by default, it runs every 60 seconds, but you could make it that it runs every 10 seconds because actually uh, it's really performant and it doesn't need a lot of server resources. Uh, what we want to do in the future is that um, we change this and it's not driven by, uh, by an uh, interval, but um, we want to detect changes on the page and that after a certain amount of changes, uh, autosave is triggered. The use case of this is that you could have a um, control uh, set uh, uh, on the on the page so that you can go back and go further and just like you work in, in Word. So you can reverse the changes and you can go further again. Uh, that's one of the features that we could enable by autosave and doing it like this that, uh, that we make it uh, based on uh, um, not on timing, not on an interval, but on detecting how many changes have been made to the page. Um, one of the next uh, steps that we are currently working on is uh, um, autosave diff. It's just when the user goes back on the page and, his, uh, and the message is shown that uh, there is an autosave state, then the user has currently the possibility only to resume or discard the changes. But the, uh, uh, what we are currently working on is that the user can see what are the changes actually to the page and decide and then decide if uh, she wants to discard the changes or resume the, the editing. So, uh, and uh, I've mentioned about uh, concurrent editing that it's currently not possible. That's something that we are going to work on as well after the autosave module is uh, completely ready. Actually, it works now. I'm just, uh, it's in a dev version because I haven't completed the tests. I'm working on the tests right now and after that I'm going to publish uh, uh, the release, but currently it's actually it's working. So, uh, for concurrent editing, we are going to work on the conflict module in order to provide the ability uh, that two users work concurrently and they have uh, two different autosave states. And if the one saves for as first, the other one doesn't get an uh, error message that uh, the uh, autosaving is not possible right now, but, he continue, but the autosave states continue working for that user and later there is the ability just to merge the, the autosave states or so actually the, the, the entity that's reserved for the autosave. So, I will show just a little demo how, how it currently works. It's pretty simple. Here, just a normal Drupal installation. I'm going to download the. Oops, I don't have the internet here. Sorry. 
So I just downloaded the auto save form module and then I'm going to activate it. So, and then I have content here and under configuration, when you open the configuration page now, under content authoring, there is a, a link for the settings of the autosave form uh, module and here the, uh, the site builder will decide uh, how often the autosave submission is triggered. Currently it's like uh, every 60 seconds, but just for the demo we will change it to every 10 seconds and currently it's activated only on content entity forms. So, here I'm going to create uh, just a new article or even to show that it works in any case I'm going to make the body field uh, like a multiple field. Um, Okay, I have content problem. Oh, it's possible. I don't have content. Nice. Okay, so now I'm going to create um, article. I'm going to save it. Also, it works only on uh, already existing entities because it doesn't make sense to work on uh, new entities because in that case it just there is no meta information for which entity the autosave is running so that's one of the limitations and now we can write here body field delta one delta zero actually then we have body field delta one so we wait like for 10 seconds, then everything happens in the background, so the user down doesn't see that anything happens at all. And uh, then we just pull reward the page. It's basically like going back to the browser. So we reward the page, and then there is the message that uh, there is uh, an autosave state for this form, and the user will just uh, resume editing it or just discard the changes. When the user discards the changes, then all the auto -save, state, auto save states are being deleted. So we just resume editing. And what we see is that both of the fields, the new one that we just added, is there and uh, the, the input that the user has provided is still there. And it hasn't been saved. And if the user decides to discard the changes, then the user sees the form like it has been without any changes made on it. And uh, then there is the other use case that we have two users working on the, on the same form. Like I'm going to log in as uh, another user on that form in a private mode. user one <coughs> and then we have here the user two working on the on the no not that one the other one working on the same form and saving it uh, user two and then user two saves the form and we go back here and then on the how to save solution here. After a couple of seconds, then we just get the message that the autosave for, uh, that the autosave is being disabled because the page has been saved on another place and merging is still not possible in Drupal 8. Later, when merging is possible, this message will not be shown to the user, and uh, the user will get the possibility just to uh, merge both the entities. And that's the current state of the autosave module. It works fine for content entities. Like I said, I haven't uh, made a uh, published release. It's there only a demo version, and it's just because I haven't finished. I didn't have time to finish the tests, but this will happen the next days, and there will be a uh, published version 
where we next go down the road. So, that's everything. Thank you for being here. Yes, and so it's working for ethnic fields, also for panels and paragraphs. <coughs> It works for all, all for all entities. It doesn't matter what do you use behind this, what kind of fields, and so on. It just works for everything. Okay. As soon as it's an entity form, it works. It doesn't matter what kind of structure do you have behind this. As soon as it's a content entity form or entity form, and it has regular fields and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, sh you showed the settings about uh, enabling for conflict entity and for content uh, entity forms. So is there also a, a possibility to activate it just for one kind of content uh, type, or, or no, maybe currently it's or is this uh, planned for the future also? Uh, currently, well, it, there is a plan that we do it. It's mm -hmm. not complicated. It's just probably like uh, one hour of uh, or thirty seconds, uh, thirty minutes of uh, of doing this, but uh, there. If you feel uh, if you want to have this feature, then feel free just to open a feature first, and then I'm going to do it. I just uh, currently we wanted to support all content entity forms, just activating the module and it's working. Uh, from and you don't need to uh, configure anything; it just works. You enable it and it works. That was the idea. But if there is um, if somebody needs the to activate it only on specific um, entity types, then we can enable that feature. It's not hard to make. Okay, then maybe you have on Monday a feature. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know I didn't get the feature on Monday. Wow. <laughs> no, no pressure. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Do we still need a core patch for that? I think it was before, right? No, previously there were some core patches needed, but that was because of the uh, approach that we used, and uh, the approach changed so that we don't need uh, any patches now. The previous approach was that we were building the entity in order to intermediately uh, save it, but we are not building the entity anymore from the user input, and that's why we don't need any core patches okay. right now. So the only use case where you might need uh, core patches, it's uh, when you have um, um, be, uh, ent uh, inline entity forms. Uh, I'm not aware how exactly the uh, current two inline entity forms that uh, Drupal have uh, uh, are working, that's paragraphs and inline entity form. Uh, but if they're working like uh, how I think, that they don't uh, save uh, the um, inter the reference entities in the widget states, then you need deep serialization for that case in order to uh, save the whole entity structure, how it was, uh, how it used to look like when you first loaded the page. And for that case, you need deep serialization, and there is an issue in Drupal World for deep serialization. Actually, the patch is ready, so we are currently just discussing how it should get in and uh, how, the, uh, how the people are feeling about it and so on. But that's going to happen, I hope, soon. And then for inline entity forms, it's going to work as well. But for regular entity forms, like article and so on, it just works out of the box. Any more questions? So you said on Monday it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it today, probably as well. Okay. <laughs> Just open a feature request. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for being here.